無マイクのテスト中マイクの調子はいかがでしょうか No, I was born in Wales,、mm-hmm. but I was.、Uh, um, my father was in the military,、mm-hmm. in the Air Force. So I spent some time in Wales, but we also travelled quite a lot.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I spent uh, um, time in various parts of this country,、mm-hmm. and also some time in Sri Lanka.、Mm-hmm. So, how long have you been living in London? Uh, I've been living in London since I was 18.、Mm-hmm. Um, I always wanted to come to London、mm-hmm. uh, for exactly the reasons that I was talking about in Tokyo. Um, uh, I was b- brought up in the country, and,、uh, and, and like that.、Uh, but there comes a point when you.、Uh, um, uh, when I felt. Uh, uncomfortable with being so known.、Mm-hmm. You know, it's a,、um, when you're, a,、uh, I think it's a, a bit, I mean, when you're a teenager, you have enormous ambitions and hopes. But ever, everyone in your community knows you. They always have, they have expectations of what you'll do. So the, there, is, and there is a conflict between the level of expectation and the level of ambition.、Mm-hmm. So that、uh, being known. Um, uh, didn't seem,、uh, began to seem uh, uh, unpleasant. And, I, and London has this wonderful capacity to be that you can disappear.、Mm. Um, uh, I went to St. Martin's, so, and it's exactly like that. It's a,、uh, a college in the centre of London.、Mm. So when you were in the college, you were a member of a Group of students,、uh, and it was very intense.、Mm. But as soon as you left the college, you were、uh, just one, one of a crowd. You weren't identifiable as a student or、mm. as a particular kind of person. So,、uh, and it's,、uh, it's the ability to be in situations where、um, it, it was that, that sort of freedom of,、uh, from、uh, being a type. Being a particular kind of person. You go to a small town where, which has a big student population,、mm-hmm. population, and students are sort of immediately identifiable as a sort of group. And that, that is something I was very unhappy about.、Mm. Uh, is, is this something to do with your early experience of、uh, moving with your family? Well, it could be. It could be, yeah. yeah.、Uh, I don't know.、Um, uh, Because actually, I always thought it was the other way around. I mean, it, it,、uh, it could be that, the, uh, um, uh, that I only have negative experiences of、uh, community rather than positive experiences. I,、uh, um, it may be that if you grow up in one place and stay in one place all the time, then you have a very different attitude to、mm-hmm. um, region or whatever.、Mm-hmm. Um, Let me just do this coffee. You're coming to your countryside. I feel very uncomfortable. And uh, uh, having lived in a small town、mm. or village was、uh, rather sort of an unpleasant, hostile experience. Yes, yes. So,、um, uh, recently I was talking to someone in a small town in Germany.、Mm. Uh, And I found it quite interesting that, I mean, that he's the director of the museum.、Uh, but the,、uh, the small town, the,、um, the, the museum director, the doctor, the mayor are all,、uh, the lawyer, they're all people that are identified by、uh, their profession. As well as by their role in the community. So、um, there is a sense in which the,、uh, the structure of the, the community and the, the, the various professions and wor-、um, occupations that go on,、um, the individual and the profession have a,、uh, a, close, a much closer link、mm-hmm. than in a situation where there are you know, lots of doctors. Or, so the, the 
um, there is a, the, the, the community has within its idea of itself a, a place for a doctor mm -hmm. and a place for a um, museum director, a place for a librarian, so that the, you uh, not only do you belong to a community by, being, by living there, but you also belong to a community by taking on this or that particular mm -hmm. role. So um, it made me think that maybe there were um, aspects to it which I hadn't thought about before. Mm -hmm. But like you, I mean, I don't, I, uh, I find myself very uncomfortable in small towns. Mm -hmm. I, I'd never wanted to live in a small town. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell me about your latest uh, work and uh, collaboration with uh, Thomas Sch Shooter? Shooter. Um, the um, okay, um, Thomas is a friend from about ten years now. Uh, I I've always liked his work, and I've um, uh, I've always been interested in. Um, what he does and admired uh, his capacity to work in different kinds of way and also uh, his work is very different from my own very 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 different mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time there are uh, uh, that doesn't but that doesn't sort of exclude my interest in it um, uh, We both have worked with a filmmaker, a German filmmaker, um, on a on documentaries. Um, and when I made um, when I made the film with him, um, after I saw it afterwards, um, I thought it was. Uh, uh, it's a good film, but maybe it's a little boring, you know. And the, and the documentaries about art—I've I've thought this for a while. In fact, generally, the documentaries about art are often a little bit boring. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and mostly they also um, are more about the artist than they are about the art. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, so when I saw the film, I thought was thought the next time I'd quite like to make a. Um, a film that was really a film, you know, a, a uh, uh, an action movie, or a, uh, and I had an idea for a, uh, a film that I wanted to make, which involved um, using um, set sets that are made uh, as narrative components, so that the, um, and that the film would be really would have no actors, would just be a sequence of sets. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that, I mean, that's a very broad term, because, you know, the, 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 the notion of a set could just be a, uh, could, could be something which doesn't have a, um, and could be a piece of sculpture, you know, it could, uh, that had material characteristics, but didn't have, a, didn't necessarily have an image of any sort. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I thought that actually, um, it would be more interesting if two different people made sets, because then you'd have the, you'd have a kind of drama as well of the contrast between mm -hmm. two kinds of uh, things. And, uh, and Thomas, just because uh, I think Thomas is the most, one of the most different people in terms of their work from me that I knew, um, I spoke to him a bit about it. Um, when, so when Nicholas asked. Uh, if I wanted to do a show at the same time as Thomas, um, uh, I was delighted because I've been trying to persuade Nicholas to show Thomas here for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, and also I was intrigued to see what our work would look like mm -hmm. together. So we began just on the basis of uh, um, thinking that we'd have a sh an exhibition and we wouldn't necessarily 
uh, split it up completely. There would be areas where our work was installed together. Mm-hmm. And that was the first thought. We also were talking about this film and kind of trying to think about how to do it. Um, and at some point, it sort of just, uh, the two ideas came together. Um, and we both found ourselves making um, rather a large number of things. Mm-hmm. Um, Thomas was started making a lot of these cars. Uh, and I'd been working on the felt objects without really knowing that I was going to use them for this exhibition, but without really knowing in quite, in quite in what way. Um, the felt, uh, it's actually the felt I've actually made with a, um, um, uh, a Japanese artist who was um, working in, close to, in the studios close to me, um, and he wanted to work with me. Uh, uh, he he's a designer. He used to work for Miyake oh, uh, occasionally, mm. uh, as well as producing work on his own. Mm. And uh, um, he he'd done a lot of felting, or done some felting. And uh, I'd been trying to make something that was a bit like a rope. Oh, uh, um, so that's where we started. It went a long way since. But it sort of went on from that. I yeah. Yes. Um, I mean, as a material, I think it's very interesting because it's a material you make rather than a material that, I mean, obviously you can buy felt, but you can also make it. You know, mm-hmm. and, it and it's um, and it's a bit like cooking, really. The material changes the structure. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, ma- the making process changes the structure of the individual components. Um, anyway, but I, so I was making, a, uh, at some point I realised that um, these were the things that I wanted to that would combine with Thomas's mm-hmm. very well, and we could start to play to manipulate them or play with them. Cause it's, it is quite playful uh, uh, together, and we, we we'd almost have something like we we'd first talk that I first talked about. We'd almost have a situation where you had um, uh, a series of sets, a series of. Uh, so, I mean, that's, uh, that was, so that was roughly the... Um, where, where does the title, Them and Us, come from? Um, <laughs> um, we needed a title for the show. Sure. <laughs> um, so Them and Us, um, uh, there's a... Um, Well, there's lots of ways you can. Just, um, there's a. Um, Thomas is a German artist, and I'm a, an English, a British artist. Uh, it happens to be the opening of the show happened to be on VE Day, uh, so there was a. Um, um, one of the titles we had for it was Tom and Jerry, mm-hmm. which was, uh, uh, which would have been very pointed in that direction. But them and us also describes. Um, uh, uh, nationalistic attitudes, which are uh, at least an undercurrent of some of the the uh, fifty years um, nostalgia. It was quite interesting reading the accounts of the fifty. What happened after fifty years after the Battle of Waterloo, mm-hmm. when there were no celebrations whatsoever? So it's a uh, a nation in decline tends to look to its past as a reminder, as a, as a, to make itself feel good about the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, so them and us is partly that sort of German English mm-hmm. thing. Uh, it also us also obviously refers to Thomas and myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, them refers to the uh, ref- refers to the work. It's also um, um, the. Um, um, uh, it also works the other way around um, since the spectator is for the spectator the spectators and us uh, and Thomas and I are them you know, so it's a way of uh, or it's, it seemed to be um, one of those interesting titles that seems to have a that seems to be very straightforward but actually has no uh, it kind of slips away from you when you try and mm-hmm. pinpoint 
mm-hmm. either who it's addressing, mm-hmm. who the us is, who the them are, or uh, uh, but at the same time remains at least somehow in contact with the with the work. So that's that's. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a good title. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, it also could also refer to the to the figure to the them could could equally well be the uh, the the felt things, and us could be the aluminium figures. So you know, it uh, would cover all of those. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, I've only seen. A couple of your work about ten years ago, mm-hmm. and I think one, one of them was so uptight, and it was so kind of huge wooden, yeah. wooden, mm-hmm. wood and steel object, or sort of frame made of wood and frame, uh, wood and uh, uh, steel, and uh, the other one had uh, was made of steel with yellow yellow thing on one side, I think. And both of them reminded me sort of uh, some kind of seeds from plants, sort of briefly. And I somehow got this uh, impression that your work is related to the nature. Um, or am I completely wrong? There is an okay. Um, um, a lot of the work I make uses curved forms, mm-hmm. and sort of it's it's sort of inevitable mm-hmm. that if you use curved forms, you uh, start to bring in organic um, organic references. Um, the uh, there are organic components um, to the work, and it does have. Um, um, uh, um, it, it, so it doesn't have a direct. Uh, it's not directly related to uh, to to nature, but the the way that I work is quite ambiguous, and it does tend to. I do tend to have a uh, uh, allow the things that I make to have a very big. Mm-hmm. Range of references, so that they, they, um, the, the, they could be this or they could be that, mm-hmm. uh, and so I allow a certain amount of speculation on the part of the uh, oh, on the part of the spectator. So, how do you become interested? In, uh, how do you become interested in, uh, to become a sculptor? Um, Um, I s- well, that's more difficult. Well, it's not more difficult. The um, um, I started making sculpture when I was uh, thirteen, mm-hmm. um, uh, and it did satisfy something that I've always that I always that I'd done even before that, which was uh, a certain kind of playing with mm-hmm. materials, mm-hmm. and there was a bit of realization that. Um, Oh, you know. Oh, that's what it is that I do. Um, so it was something that's f- that's fair. That seems fairly natural to me to manipulate mat- mm-hmm. materials. Um, uh, and um, but it was a long. I was and I was very um, uh, dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but I never imagined that. The, but it, you know, it was a long time before um, I decided that that's what I was going to do. Um, even going to art college, it was a bit of a sort of delaying action. You know, that well, I could still carry on mm-hmm. messing about like this for a little while, and then, you know, then I'll grow up, and then I, I'll have to do something else too. But I won't stop doing this. But the longer I can keep doing it, before. I have to do something else, then the easier it will be to kind of do it mm-hmm. in secret, as it were. So, um, uh, uh, 
uh, it was I was probably almost thirty before I realised that actually, if I let anything else get in the way, then uh, I'd be stupid, you know, and then I'd regret it later. So sometime between the age of 13 and 30, I decided I was going to be a sculptor, but actually um, the point at which I did I, uh, is hard to pinpoint exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I've never wanted to be a painter. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it was never, that was, I'd never wanted to be, I've never wanted to be another kind of artist. Mm-hmm. I've only ever wanted to make sculpture. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, absolutely, mm-hmm. it's a, that's absolutely clear to me. So it's not a question of um, being interested in art mm-hmm. and sort of drifting into sculpture. I actually knew what I wanted to do mm-hmm. um, from the fir- from the very first, mm-hmm. uh, and, the, the, and there was never any, there's never been any alternative or any uh, anything else that remotely is as interesting mm-hmm. to me. And uh, um, so, since you were thirteen or uh, while you were a student, has the shape or material you use changed very much, or uh, you have uh, some sort of you have a preference of a particular shape? Or shapes, no. Um, mm-hmm. um, materials, yes. Um, the the w- there is a continuity, mm-hmm. uh, not so much since I was a, 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 a child, but I've always tended to, but I, the, since I was a student, the materials, there are some things I can identify. The materials that I use are materials which I can manipulate by hand. Uh, uh, and I've used, me- I've used metal less frequently mm-hmm. than, for example, wood. Um, for really a long time, um, I've noticed that there are, that I tended to work in two sorts of ways. One of which is to make very open things, and the other of which is to make quite um, sealed up, quite hard things, and. Uh, 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 in some ways, that's associated with metal and wood, so that um, for a long time I'd make alternate works, you know, one in metal, one in wood. Mm-hmm. And the metal works tend to be much more um, hermetic, much more sealed up mm-hmm. than the wooden works. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, <coughs> a part of that is a strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, or at least I, I always used to think it was a strategy, but now I'm not so sure. It may be just a, you know, maybe completely just how I do things. But uh, um, I used to think it was a strategy to make sure that um, that I didn't that I finished everything that I finished the things that I made. So that I mean, if you always work in the same material, then um, there is a kind of continuity between from A to B to C to D, mm-hmm. um, because the material is continuous. And actually, I wanted to make things that were completely separate complete, mm-hmm. and completely self-contained and um, uh, autonomous. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so vi- the varying material seemed to be a way of guaranteeing um, things being autonomous, because it, it meant that, you, that if you put two in the room, they looked less like each other. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't look like they belonged together. That mm-hmm. they were, uh, they they were they were separated. So mm-hmm. it was a way of separating things out. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, I think there are other things you could discuss in relation to that. Just in in the the kinds of material, the the response to light, the way in which. I mean, so all of those things I think are um, um, a part of it. The um, um, the quality of of material is something that is very very important Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and so the uh, allowing the 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 material which a thing is made to be viewed um, one way you can do that is by kind of varying Mm -hmm. so that 
you see something as being made of this or that thing and this thing being made rather than the wall being made of steel or mm-hmm. whatever so, um, but the, it's the uh, I think what interests me in the world is is that it's the world you know I think that's what that's what interests me not so much that it's made of stuff you know that it's, mm-hmm. that, it, that, that it's I think matter is what it is one of the things that interests me you know that uh, uh, and the 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 relationship between the the human self, mm-hmm. the the idea of the the self, mm-hmm. uh, the idea of who you are, and the the matter and, and what the world is is um, uh, is strange. I think you know that you are you're an indiv- you're a, a living organism, mm-hmm. uh, a conscious conscious being. Um, you don't experience yourself as material, but you're conscious. But at the same, but the the world in which you inhabit. Is made of um, matter, made made of, made of substances. Um, yet at the same time, you you can have an impact on those substances through uh, manipulation. So so representation in in a sense is never um, uh, the the primary interest I've had has been in matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, but matter obviously can t- occurs in, you know, um, also has form as well. It, it becomes comes as kinds of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, by the sound of the way you talk, it sounds as if the world is made of matter things. Mm-hmm. These are people. Oh no, the, the world is, but it's the world is. Uh, um, um, no, I don't think that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, um, the subject is also important. The the, the human subject is the, the the human being is also mm-hmm. important to me. Um, I mean, I do. I mean, the, I think. You do have a different relationship to people than you do to things, and I think it's more puzzling um, because of that. Um, uh, because the other person uh, has the op- the opposite characteristics of of yourself. I mean, you you experience yourself as being. Um, and your material body as uh, um, uh, something which accompanies that being, you know, that sense of um, consciousness. Whereas uh, another person, you're conscious of their material body, uh, but but it's inhabited by a consciousness. Um, uh, and uh, I mean, in some ways, I think the sculpture should that I'd like to make sculpture which had similar character, which you experienced in the same, in similar ways, the ways you experience another person I mean, that has that that it's not just a thing, but which has that sense of coming across the subject barrier, oh. so that the. Uh, the, the the I'd like the sculpture to straddle the uh, the conscious and the material world. Oh, that's I, I think that's the kind of the kind of quality that I would like mm-hmm. the sculptures. The potential I think sculpture can have. You know, mm-hmm. I think, and I think your, your work has that kind of quality, mm-hmm. and uh, I I can't pin it down. Mm-hmm. But uh, all I can say is I feel some kind of spirit. Mm-hmm. From your work, mm-hmm. I feel something is there. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. And um, when you make a, a sculpture, how do you start? How do you work things out? For example, uh, beauty and beast. So, um, uh, that's sort of form or shape. There's a whole different variety of things that can start. Maybe. Uh, it may be a something very simple, mm-hmm. um, or it, um, it can be a. Uh, it could be. 
uh, it's a, it can be a material, it can be a shape, it can be a uh, a way of working with a material. It can be it can even be a a slogan or you know just a, 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 a phrase or a saying. It can be a it can be an experience. It can be a um, a memory. You know there's um, uh, it could start from. It sometimes starts from drawing. Not not so often at the moment, but in the past, you know, it has. There have been. Fa- it, ha- it can it has been fairly intellectual from time to time. You know, there have been like these are the rules, and that's so. Uh, and sometimes it's a. F- it can be a found object that is that I. You know, I could sort of get get interested in this uh, this shape or that relationship between those two materials. And, uh, all of those, any of those things, can be um, the the starting point. Really, mm-hmm. uh, it's very rarely um, um, <coughs> um, it's very rarely a representation mm-hmm. um, that you know I'm going to make a. Uh, um, uh, a cow, or I'm going to make a horse. I mean, it's very rarely. That's very rare. Although, um, you know, there are a- aspects of that in things. But it, for a long time, uh, I very rarely started with the the notion of. Ma- it's very rarely started with likeness. I very very rarely started with likeness. The notion I'm going to make a, a horse or a mm-hmm. um, a face or a head. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can, very occasionally it is, but not as it's quite rare now. Mm-hmm. So, it's quite open, can we say? The, the procedure, yes. 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 So, gradually. So Sometimes it's very clear, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, I'm better at making decisions now than I used to be, mm-hmm. but that's just habit, I think, just, just speed. Also experience. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, could you give me an example of what about the time after time? Um, it took you a long time for you to finish that work like I understand. The, well, that was when it was first made. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I've made several works like that mm-hmm. out of the stainless steel. Um, and <coughs> the title is partly referring to going back to something again and again. Um, It's also to do with reflection. The title is uh, um, It's to do with reflection and repetition. That the uh, um, um, it's a way of telling somebody off, mm-hmm. isn't it? It's in English. Uh, if you're telling somebody off, you've repeated something. You, you say, "I've told you time after time mm-hmm. that, that don't do this," so that mm-hmm. you imply that something's the same. Some something happens which is the same each time. So, uh, um, uh, when you so the the work implies a kind of. Re- uh, for the spectator, at least I assume the work implies a kind of return, uh, and each time you return, it's uh, in some sense it's the same, uh, or what it gives you back is the same. It doesn't, uh, um, which is the quality of reflection. But at the same time, uh, the um, um, At the same time, time and depth, I yeah. think, are um, I think of as being two things which are which have an interesting connection. 
like time and distance does. Time and depth have a have an interesting connection. They're similar kinds of phenomena, um, similar kinds of experience. You experience time in, in a sim- uh, depth is the spatial equivalent of time, um, and uh, um, what the work that that reflection has is 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 depth, you know, or and so that. Um, uh, and it, it's got. Um, I'm not being very clear about this, but the. Um, uh, so the, the the way in which the work um, reflects um, is a uh, a measure of time and and depth. The work has a the work has this kind of illusory depth mm-hmm. to it. The surfaces. Uh, it's not a flat surface; it's a fluid surface, uh, uh, and uh, w- within a within a defined shape. So that the um, uh, what it is, it, it's like a um, uh, uh, it's like a puddle. It's like it's like it's water. Mm-hmm. It has it has depth mm-hmm. in the way that water has depth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whereas a, uh, a mirror doesn't really have the same kind of thing because the surface isn't broken. Well, because the surface is broken, it has that um, depth. So that the um, um, the uh, the act of polishing the surface, um, uh, which is a process which goes on through time. Um, was a me- is a means of kind of excavating the illusory depth, the the, the visual depth from the from the object. Um, but mainly, it's just to do with repetition, time after time, that. Uh, um, uh, if you come back and uh, uh, it's, to, it's to do with repetition and trying to marry uh, the idea of time with the idea of um, surface of a of a, uh, a broken surface Did you have a visual image first, and then? Well, like I say, I mean, I've made, um, I've used, uh, I've used sta- that kind of stainless steel several times, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I developed with the manufacturers that way of manipulating the surface. Um, did I have a visual image? Um, uh, well, yes, <laughs> the uh, um, that was originally that the work there was originally made for something else. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was made in '92, something mm-hmm. else, uh, and then put to one side. So I haven't been working on it continuously since '92. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I had it, I had it as a part of something else for a long time before I understood actually what I wanted to do mm-hmm. with that, which is something that used to happen much more than it does now. It used to happen a lot that I'd make something and then stop and then mm-hmm. start again later mm. so it's um, what it is is you have a, a note, an idea you suddenly realize what it could be mm. so and uh, the 
uh, with with that one, uh, there is one that I made earlier this year, which was made and finished and sort of quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but at, that one is really quite dependent upon actually the quality of the surface to uh, the polishing on the surface in order to generate its uh, effect. So in fact, it needed the it needed the amount of damage mm -hmm. that was done to it, which was then taken away in the polishing in order to get to the surface that, I, that we've got. It was very, very dirty mm -hmm. when we started polishing it. In a way, uh, are school, your work, sort of reflection of yourself, and then uh, by looking at work, it comes back to you, and then you make something else. And um, you sort of gradually develop and evolve things. Um. Yes, I mean, yes, to, to some extent that happens. <laughs> not, 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 not. Um, uh, well, I don't like to, okay, I don't like to think that what I make is a, uh, is generated from, I'm, I'm sure it's not true that what I make is generated, uh, is hermetic, you know, it's not, um, I did this, then I should do this, then I should do that, then I should do this. So, so it's the story mm -hmm. isn't self-referential mm -hmm. because there are, um, uh, and I don't often make things in, with refer with reference to things that have gone before. Occasionally, I can. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, every every artist does that. You you make something, then you realise, ah, oh, that's what I should do. You know, that, I mean, that obviously happens, mm -hmm. but that's not really what you're asking. Um, but I also would be quite resistant to the idea that the work was um, had no connection with the yeah. world, which is sort of implied of its. Um, um, uh, just a sequence. So, so, so it was yeah, just a sequence. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. I mean, obviously, I refer to what I've done before, but I don't think it is self-contained because mm. other things come in. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, could you tell me uh, a little about be beauty and beast, A and B? Oh well, that's um, that's quite obvious. Um, they're both to do with tr with uh, um, skin. Um, um, the um, the story of, uh, of Beauty and the Beast is to do with the um, uh, that um, The surface appearance of things don't reveal their contents, so that the um, neither the appearance of the the woman beauty nor the animal beast are actually um, um, enable you to make accurate judgments about their uh, about their character. It's their internality, mm. which, um, which is which is significant, mm. which is of significant. Um, uh, the um, one work is clear and one work is dark, um, and uh, uh, those are also the characteristics of bestiality. Uh, and, and beautifulness, the, the, the notion that 
beauty would be clear and the, the beast would be dark. Um, the uh, but ni- the in both cases they're just empty shells. Uh, they have no their internality mm-hmm. is uh, has no real relationship to their external form. Mm-hmm. So it's the um, uh, Um, they're both works about the idea of appearance. Mm. Uh, I mean, in the same way, I mean, the the re- the the, the steelwork is also about appearance, you know, mm. and uh, could equally could potentially could also have had the same title. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it, just having the pair seemed to be more mm. ap- uh, appropriate. So the story, of Be- you know the story of Beauty and the Beast. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. Both works are um, intensely manipulated. Mm. They're very heavily made. Uh, there's a lot of fussing about on the surface of them. Mm. Um, uh, and um, uh, Both works are really entirely surface. They have no um, nothing, there's nothing else holding them up other than uh, other than the surface so that their um, if it's their internality which is important mm. then the, inter- the if it's their insideness which is important to their character then actually that's something which must be applied by the spectator or must be rather than being rather than being there in the work. Um, uh, So what the work is trying to do, I think, is asking you to look at the uh, is, is asking you to look at the absence rather than the, the presence. Mm, yes. um, they really, really look like uh, see through a plant or some kind of uh, uh, life in the sea. Do they? Mm. <laughs> That wasn't your intention. No. Right. Okay. Um, when you make a sculpture, what is important for you? What do you care most? Well, depend, that depends on the sculpture. I think it's important that it looks finished. That's um, uh, actually I don't think you're supposed to. 
tell you? I don't think you're supposed to. You, you, do, you, do you want to be ambiguous? Uh, I think I use ambiguity a lot. Yes. Mm, right. So, uh, you'd like to be ambiguous? Um, Yes, I don't have a. I don't have a. Um, uh, I don't think ambiguity is negative. Uh, it hasn't to do with um, not knowing or um, the. Um, I think the work I make is materially very specific, mm -hmm. and it's very clear in it as an entity. Um, it remains open what the um, relationship between that clarity and intention mm -hmm. is. Um, uh, that's a result of my own, uh, well, that's a result of my own uncertainties, mm -hmm. uh, and also the fact that I don't think there ever is a one-to-one -one correspondence between an object and, a, uh, and an intention. I mean, you can never be clear. Um, and that... I think a certain, basically, I think a certain amount of ambiguity is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Are there any artists or novelists you like? Or you well, there's lots. Tell me a lot. Uh, uh, living, dead. It doesn't matter. Um, the um, <laughs> there's there's too many there's um, uh, from artists of my generation, mm -hmm. we start there, mm -hmm. um, then the artists that I, whose work I particularly like are um, Tony Cragg, mm -hmm. um, Susanna Solano, um, Thomas Schutter, mm -hmm. obviously. There are a number of younger artists that are who will come out um, in this country. Um, uh, Kathy de Mocho. Um, oh, Julian Opie's work I like a lot. Historically, the uh, um, depend it becomes down to much more specific things. Uh, For example, I'm a big fan of Poussin's painting, mm. um, particularly the late paintings, the, the later paintings. Um, I've started to like 
Uh, and in sculpture, well, in sculpture, right, the uh, um, uh, I've started to like French Baroque sculpture, which is quite unusual. Um, and uh, um, Canova, for example, is a neoclassical sculpture that I like a lot. Um, in the 20th century, the sculptors that I uh, uh, I like most well um, there's um, a very small number of Matisse's that I like um, I like there's quite a lot of Brancusi that I like uh, uh, Tatlin I think was fantastic Judd is uh, a particular, is someone I like a lot. Um, uh, Picasso from, there's only a small number of Picasso, but at the, from 19, uh, sort of 1912, 1911, 1912, was Picasso. Uh, and there's a small number of Gonzales that I think are great. Writers I used to... Um, uh, I used to read a lot of poetry. Now most of the reading I do is... Um, but I used to read a lot of poetry. I used to be very, uh, and I am, very interested in Rilke's poetry. In Rilke's, he's a German writer. Mm -hmm. um, oh, R I Rilke. R I L K E. Um, I also like. There's a Russian writer, Mandelstam, who's a similar period of poetry that I like. Um, but uh, uh, I there's an American you know I also like Philip K. Dick the uh, American science fiction writer very much mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, there's a lot of science fiction my favorite films are science fiction films um, uh I'm a big fan of science fiction films. I, and actually, I think my, on one level, I think what I do has a much more to do with science fiction than it does to do with nature. Mm -hmm. um, although the source for a lot of science fiction imagery actually is, is nature-derived. Um, that kind of parallel universe mm -hmm. notion of making a, uh, a representation. I mean, that's, I think the work, my work has that kind of connection to nature, not a, not a direct. So if it's like, if it reminds you of nature, it's because it looks like it, not mm -hmm. because it has a reference to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, so that's the thing. Um, uh, I think there's a cons the, I mean, there's a lot that I like in science fiction. There's really a lot, a lot of science fiction movies that I that I enjoy. Uh, which, which ones do you like? 
Okay. Um, uh, Solaris. Mm-hmm. Um, the day of the earth is still. Invasion of the body snatchers. The man with the x-ray eyes. Mm -hmm. Uh, The incredible shrinking man. (laughs) What do you like about science fiction? Uh, the notion of speculation with matter. The notion of construction an alternative on the basis of uh, speculation with matter, I think, is is what I like. Yes, very much. Why? Because it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it doesn't interest me very much. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> um, because I think that's what the basic um, um, uh, okay. Because I think it can give you an answer. Mother. If you want to know um, why we're here, mm-hmm. what it is that we're supposed to be doing, um, what it's all about, mm-hmm. uh, some people tell you to look at look for God. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I don't think there is a God, so uh, I think I look for the answers in matter. Um, I think there must be a relationship between um, um, not must be, but I think it's something like that is the answer. That uh, um, uh, I would like to to know what the connection was between materiality and meaning. It's a puzzle, I think, as to why there is meaning and why there is matter. I think that's what, if you want a serious answer to the question, I think that's what the answer is. exhibition in uh, I have a lot to do next year Mm -hmm. I have exhibitions in New York um, Austria Mm -hmm. Ireland and South America Mm -hmm. Um, and I have to make the work for some of those I mean some of them (laughs) some of them are um, The work exists. Mm-hmm. South America, the work exists. Uh, the main things I'm doing, I'm making a project for the for the museum in Dublin, uh, and I'm trying to make a, uh, some works for a, a large exhibition in Vienna, 
there's the two men. One's indoor, one's outdoor. Mm-hmm. So in Ireland, there's actually a lot of pre-planning. I've done a lot of research. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of... Because it's... Uh, I have to make a presentation. And I have to tell people what I'm going to do. In uh, Austria, it's a... <clears throat> it's also a large work, but actually I'm the one that decides what's going to happen, so it's just a question of me. Uh, I would, so I just do it. Whereas in Ireland, I have to tell people what I'm going to do. So there's a lot of... There'll be a model and there'll be all sorts of pre, pre-planning pre uh, for the one in... For the one in Austria, there won't be... There'll be pre-planning, but it'll be within the studio rather than involving outside people. <coughs> 